And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey everybody, today we're taking a look at Star Wars Risk. Now before you have some preconceptions about this, I need to explain something to you. This is most definitely Star Wars, but this is most definitely not Risk. There is nothing about Risk in this. Yes, you're rolling dice and attacking enemy units, but this is actually a successor to an incredibly great game that was put out by Hasbro slash Avalon Hill um, over 10 years ago, and that's called Star Wars Queen's Gambit, which was based on episode one of Star Wars. This one's based on episode six, the, um, the, Re the Return of the Jedi, and it's about the good guys trying to destroy that uh, Death Star, which is now fully operational. So this game takes a lot of those mechanisms and has three different things going on. The Luke versus Darth Vader, the battle, the, the space battle for the Death Star, and then the Rebels trying to disable the shield generator on the moon of Endor. How does it play? Let me show you. So here's the board for the game. It looks like a giant TIE fighter. And the Rebel player starts with all their forces on the board. The Imperial player gets a whole pile of TIE fighters here that uh, are in reserve. Each player is going to get a deck of cards, and they're going to shuffle those cards. And each round of the game, you're going to have six cards in your hand. You're going to pick three of these cards, your choice, and play them. You'll put them in front of you. Then the Rebel player will play one of their cards first. Then the Imperial player will play one card, etc. When you play a card, you will do one of the options on that card. Most of the Imperial cards have two options, although several of the Rebel cards have three different options that they can do. So let's talk a little bit about the options. Many of the options for the, um, the good guys here, they can move the X-Wings or Y-Wings or the B-Wings, or they can move the Millennium Falcon. While the dark side has the Executor, the Death Star, and TIE Fighters. Now those are all gonna form here. Now the whole point of this game is for the good guys to blow up the Death Star. To do that, they first need to take the shields out, and we'll talk about that in a second. But meanwhile, they can be fighting out here. When you pick one of your groups, you can move everyone from that group to an adjacent spot, and then you can attack. So you can, let's say I do X-Wings, I can move all my X-Wings off this ship and into here. And then if there was someone next to them, they, I would attack. Now when you attack someone, you roll dice equal to the number of ships you're using with a maximum of five, and then it depends. If you're attacking TIE Fighters or X-Wings, you simply need to roll three or higher. If you're attacking Y-Wings, four or higher. B-Wings, five or higher. If you're attacking the Executor, you need to get a five or higher, and the Millennium Falcon, a five or higher, if you're attacking those. Now, the Executor Star Destroyer and the Millennium Falcon both have tracks over here, so as they take damage, you're going to mark it down because they're not destroyed in one hit. All the other ships are destroyed in one hit. If you completely destroy a whole region and clear out a whole sector, you'll draw the top card from your pile and stick it underneath your order cards that you're doing. So it gives you an extra order card. It's random, but that's how it works. Um, when the Millennium Falcon moves, it can move and it can shoot and roll with two dice. The Executor can move two spaces and roll four dice. It's very powerful. When you play a TIE Fighter card, you can also deploy four TIE Fighters wherever the Executor is. If the Executor is ever blown up, all the TIE Fighters that are not on the board are discarded from the game. Just like when any ship here is played, they're discarded from the game. The, star, uh, the Death Star is going to be trying to blow things up. When a Death Star card is played, you pick one of these outer ships, you roll two dice, and if either one of them shows a five or a six, then that whole ship is blown up and everything on it is gone too. When all these outer ships are blown up, the Death Star can start targeting sectors here, killing everything in them. Meanwhile, on the Death Star itself, there's a duel between Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker. Now, when this is happening, players can be playing cards from their hand to show that they're going to attack with Darth Vader or with Luke Skywalker. And when that happens, they'll roll dice, and Darth Vader hits in a four higher, Luke Skywalker hits in a four higher, and they get different dice, and they also have hit point tracks. The dark side also has cards that show force lightning, and those just do two automatic damage to Luke Skywalker. 
At the same time, if Darth Vader's token ever gets here to three, two, or one, and then the light side also plays basically the redemption of Darth Vader card, then Darth Vader is redeemed and they kill Darth Vader and the Emperor at the same time. Now, if Luke Skywalker is killed, the, the bad guys, the dark side, will get four cards that they're going to be able to play at the end of the turn, which is a big deal. If Darth Vader's killed, the good guys get three cards. If they redeem Darth Vader, like I just mentioned, they will get five cards. So over here, you're fighting basically just to get more cards. Then finally, we have the track over here, the Battle of Endor. We're trying to get to the shield generator. Now to do that, there's going to be a marker up here, and you have to get that marker all the way down. Anytime the rebels play a card that basically shows what they're going to be going for the shield generator, one of these cards here, they are going to roll five dice. Now they're trying to get the numbers that are shown on each of these spots here. So you'll see here, they need two, 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 two. But as the track goes on farther and farther, near the end, they need fives. So they will simply roll dice. Here, all my dice are above a two, so I move five spaces. The Imperial player is going to be able to put Stormtroopers out with one of some of their cards, which will put plus ones on those spaces. So now these spots here, the Rebel needs three. So let's say he rolls, and the next time, these two dice are no good, so he uses threes to get through those. Actually, no, he rolled two twos, so after he uses the threes, he can get through these twos also. So that's going to be happening. Once the shield generator has gotten to the end, then the rebel can use any ship, and if they're next to the Death Star, attack it, and if they roll a six on the attack, then the Death Star blows up. The bad guys win by essentially wiping out all the good ships. If they do that, then they win. Now, I said at the beginning that this was a descendant of Star Wars Queen's Gambit, and it's definitely the truth. Star Wars Queen's Gambit had four different battles going on in it. This one has three of them. So this is a simplified version of that. Um, and one of the three battles, the Luke versus Darth Vader, is not so critical. Yes, the winner of that one will get a pile of cards, and that can swing the tide of the game, but it's not critical. And what I do find a little disconcerting is that that one ends usually before the game's half over, which doesn't feel as cinematic in the movie. You know, it's like, oh, Darth Vader killed Luke, or Luke killed Darth Vader. Okay, whatever, back to the main thing. That being said, the game really can be close. Sure, there's a, there's a lot of luck. There's a lot of dice being thrown in this, but it's really fun to sit there and play with the cards and go, okay, do I just concentrate on this middle section? But if I concentrate on the middle section, I'll let the rebels run all the way up. If I don't get those plus one tokens out, they're going to have an easy time getting to that shield generator. And at the same time, if I spend so much time with that, then they're going to wipe out my TIE fighters, or even worse, they'll take out the Executor. And if they take out the Executor, I don't have any more TIE fighters. Or should I just throw a bunch of TIE fighters on the board so that I have them? Or do I use the Death Star to take out their ships as quickly as possible? It's not heavy decisions, but it's interesting. It's light. It's fast. It takes 45 minutes. I love the little models, you know, the, there's tons of little TIE Fighters and X-Wings and B-Wings and, and Y-Wings on the board. And while it does seem odd that the X-Wings are equal to a TIE Fighter in this game, I can overlook that because it's just very smooth. The whole thing is roll some dice, do you hit, go on. And like I said, not like Risk at all, but that's a good thing, okay? This game is really good. I was really surprised by this one. This is a game that, you know, is sold at Toys R Us and other places. Go out and get it. If you like Star Wars, the theme is strong in this one. If you like quick, fun, really light style war games, you're gonna enjoy this pushing plastic miniatures around. There's not super high strategy here, merely just playing some cards, but the system is solid and it works well. Certainly give this one a try. That's Star Wars Risk. Risk. It's Star Wars, the battle for the Death Star, something like that, the Battle of Endor. Why don't they call it what it is? Either way, it's cool. Dice Tower of Judgment, excellent. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top rated audio podcast at dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at coolstuffinc.com.